Um, I want to introduce the first speaker, uh, who is really an amazing, amazing young woman. I had the privilege of getting to know her uh, just uh, past few months ago, and it's not something that I'm sure she was looking for. That's probably the story of most women in my life. But, uh, <laughs> but, but sorry, honey, I don't know where my wife is. But, uh, but uh, this was uh, really very serendipitous for me to meet somebody like her because she really is an extraordinary woman. Uh, Paige is a high school uh, student at Mechanicville High School. When I met her, we had a conversation about what she's going to do, what she wants to do with her life, and what she wants to do is become a PA. Uh, she's really a scholar. She's uh, at the 99th percentile in her class. I'm probably under-recognizing her grades and her ability. She's a very talented athlete. She's involved in lots and lots of activities. She has recently gotten into the Binghamton uh, Pre-Med Honors Program. So we're very excited to have Paige open the show and tell us her story of a DVT. Paige? It's a pleasure to join you here tonight and share my story with all of you. Whether to your disappointment or to your pleasure, my story will not be told in the way that many of you are used to. There's no medical terminology or long acronyms for diseases and disorders. No categorization of my experience from one to 10. This story has no accurate measurement, nor does it state cold hard facts. My story is full of fear, anxiety, and compassion, the things that are not written down in your charts to aid in diagnosis. My story began in early January. This is time when most are looking forward to the new year. I did as well, until about three days into the new year when my world came crashing down around me. Like most teenagers, I work a part-time job at a restaurant, adding up to about 30 hours a week. I walked into my shift that day ready to deal with rude customers, lazy coworkers, and smelling like food for nine hours straight. <laughs> but mostly, I was ready to start the new year off with a positive note. But something occurred that day that I was in no way prepared for. About three hours into my shift, I got slight discomfort in my arm. I thought it was probably because I slept on it wrong, so I just continued working. About 20 minutes later, my coworker pointed out that my arm started getting incredibly red. I told her it was fine. I probably just thought it was an allergic reaction, so I continued working. But the aching continued, and the pain stretched between my armpit all the way down to my fingertips. The only thing that seemed to relieve it was the brief moments I would lift my arm above my head to grab things off the shelf. I started to get scared. I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't bear to admit it to myself. Anything that I ever learned about medicine suddenly ran through my brain like a broken record. I tried anything to take my mind off what was happening, so I just kept working. About 45 minutes later, my dad showed up to work during my break. I didn't know if this was some strange form of fatherly intuition or a miracle. I showed him my arm and he refused to let me go back to work. If he never got there that day, I would have fought through the pain and continued working. I knew that if I spoke to my manager, he would let me leave early. So we drove 15 minutes down to the nearest urgent care and my dad stressed to the nurse at the front desk that he saw something vascular. So she got us in to see the doctor as quickly as possible. After going through the routine medical history and vitals, the urgent care's physician assistant walked in. As soon as he saw my arm, he told me straight up that he had no idea what was happening. That, of course, didn't calm my nerves whatsoever, and I just thought that something really bad must be happening if he didn't even know. After pulling in two more of the doctors, they brainstormed enough to find out that I might have had a blood clot. So they sent me for an ultrasound, and they measured my arm, and they calculated it was three inches larger than my other arm in diameter. Um, for the ultrasound, I was brought into a small dark room where only the sound of my blood rushing through my veins could be heard. That was until they couldn't be heard at all. It was an apparent difference between the blood flow between my right and left arm. I heard it, I had felt it, and as that small dark room, as they finished up with the ultrasound, I did all I could to stop, from, stop them from seeing the tears in my hands shaking in genuine fear. I didn't need them to tell me the diagnosis, I had heard it and the sound will forever be ingrained in my memory. The rest of the night was a bit of a blur. Not only did I have a blood clot, but there was actually two in my right arm. I was given blood thinning pills and injections that would, soon, that I would have to soon give to myself, and I was sent on my way, but not without a few terrifying words that no one wants to hear. The discharge nurse told me that I was extremely dangerous, that if anything changes, go right to the emergency room. A headache, difficulty breathing, chest pain, anything. Now, if the clot wasn't enough to worry about, the side effects of the blood thinnings were. Excessive bleed and easy bruising were just a topping on the cake. 
I tried my best to stay strong, but the morning after I got home from urgent care, I felt as helpless as ever. I went to give myself the warfarin injection that following morning and broke down in tears. I couldn't even bear to give myself the injection. I felt weak. Overnight, I had convinced myself that none of it had happened. The harsh reality of the morning made me hit my limit. I had to swallow my pride and ask my mother to do the injections for me, even though I declined her help about a dozen times the night before as an attempt to, ma to maintain my independence. I hated that I couldn't bring myself to do it, and I had hated what had happened to me. Two days later, I met Dr. Maida. Safe to say I was terrified, and he knew it. He would try to joke around with me and talk about my future, but majority of the responses would be awkward combinations of tears and laughter. He had told me that he had believed my clot was caused by repetitive motion of my arm, originating in the subclavian vein. At first, I thought it was the dumbest thing to get the clot from. Thousands of people do much more strenuous activity than me. It's not possible. Unfortunately for me, it was. My vein was almost completely blocked off, with smaller clots falling all the way down my arm. I was given two options, wait it out on the blood thinners or get surgery to relieve the pressure on the vein. Without a second thought, I picked the surgery. I couldn't wake up every day and wait out something that had the potential of killing me. I wanted it gone, and I wanted it gone now. Despite my doctor's reassuring words, I cried myself to sleep that night in fear of what was to come. I was admitted to Glens Falls Hospital the next morning, and I had a short procedure to insert the catheter for the clot dissolving medicine. I remember waking up in the ICU and immediately being told that I couldn't get out of bed, not even to use the toilet or walk around, and I would have to use a bedpan because of all the fall precautions. This news was the thing that put me over the edge. I remember crying and telling my mom I wanted to go home, still half, of it, half out of it from the anesthesia. I had every last bit of freedom taken away from me within 24 hours, and I couldn't handle it. Between the IV and the catheter, in both arms, I even struggled to push myself up in bed. I was confined to the hospital bed. The next couple of days were just as mentally and emotionally trying. I would sit in the hospital bed all day and wait. Wait for the nurse, wait for the doctor, wait for the surgery. I did have some fantastic friends and family that would come keep me company, which I'm very thankful for, but I couldn't stand, and wait, stand to wait any longer for it to end. The second day, we were supposed to end the clot dissolving medicine and do the surgery. But because of my sour luck, I needed more time and had to wait another 24 hours for the surgery. Recovery after my surgery was fast. Even as I weaned, after, weaned off of the pain medication, I was in little pain. I left the ICU the day after the surgery and returned to my nice warm bed. Everything felt normal, but it wasn't. Still to this day, I have to limit the amount of weight I put on my right arm. I'm still on blood thinners, so I always need to be cautious around anything that could cut me or cause a bruise. People are always curious about what happened to me and ask questions. I've been asked so many questions about my condition that I've summarized my story down to a science. The possibility of needing to place a stent in my vein is still being discussed due to the scar tissue. These things may seem overbearing and cause constant anxiety for others, but I've adjusted and I'm thankful that I'm still alive. I think now more than ever how close I was to dying. I am young. It would have been easy to misdiagnose a blood clot for an 18-year-old girl. A large majority of people don't even realize that that is a possibility. I thank God every day for putting my life in the hands of such wonderful people. Without them, who knows what would have happened. I hope that as I go off to school and meet new people that I can raise awareness for such serious vascular conditions because you never know who this could happen to. I sure didn't know it was possible. Thank you for all joining us here tonight and for your contribution to this cause. I hope you have a wonderful evening.